Welcome everybody to tonight's stream, live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Tonight we are going to go over where to sell your microgreens. So let's get into that now. All right, where to sell your microgreens. And hold on, let me... Hey, all right, where to sell your microgreens. So you've got your grow down, you can grow your microgreens, you're great at growing your microgreens, but where do you sell them now? So we're gonna go over some of the top places to sell your microgreens. Obviously, number one, most people are going to think about is your farmer's markets. Farm markets are a great way for beginners to, to go to start with because it gives you the flexibility. Uh, if you have a tr if you're growing and you have a tray of sunflowers that go bad or aren't good or whatever, you just don't bring them to the market. So you're good to go. You just don't bring them. Nobody was expecting to sell it. You didn't have them sold already. You're good to go. And so on for any other products you have, arugula or anything else you're selling. And you can just uh, bring what you have that's good, ready to go, and you go sell your microgreens at the farmer's markets. Uh, so it's a great way to start out if you're just starting to grow. Uh, go to the farmer's markets, bring what you have that's ready to go. One of my favorite ways is home delivery. Uh, obviously, um, since we had the big health scare that went on uh, with everything in the past few years, home deliveries increasingly became very popular. So everybody's used to getting something delivered to their house now. Uh, so it's a great, great way to go about doing your business. Uh, customers love the ability to have fresh produce delivered to the door. Growers love setting up subscription services for consistent grow and income. Uh, you can get you know, people have gotten 12 subscriptions in one week on their ads and so on. Uh, so this is a great way to go and you have your consistent target marketing advertisement going on. So you have specific customers you're growing for every week. So you know what you're going to grow every week until you add more and more on. Obviously, then you just keep growing more and more as they come on. But this is a great way to know what products you're growing and you're selling everything you're growing. So less waste, higher profitability there. So love home deliveries. Uh, restaurants, uh, this is one of the first things most people think about because this is kind of where microgreens started, was in the restaurants uh, and as decorations and frilly things and stuff like that. So this is the way everybody started, was restaurants. Uh, out in California is where it mainly started, and they were putting it on to make things look pretty. So, But restaurants are still great, uh, still a great way to sell your products at a high value. Uh, so map check, check what's uh, restaurants are in your delivery radius. So if you're delivering 10, 15, 20, 25 miles out for your home deliveries, check your map for your restaurants and stop by and sample to them and hopefully sell to them. And then you just pick them up along your normal delivery route already. Uh, that's a great, great way to go about it with, uh, restaurants. Um, so restaurants days and times can be a challenging to work around sometimes if you got some of these fancy restaurants don't open till five o'clock nobody's in there till two o'clock does that make sense for your route to deliver at two o'clock or after or if they want it before 10 o'clock in the morning make sure that that works for you and your delivery route um you don't want to make two deliveries route right in the same area you want to be very efficient on your deliveries and one thing about restaurants you got to watch out for uh, compared to home deliveries and farmers markets, you get paid right away. Restaurants typically are on a net 15, which means they have 15 days to pay you from the delivery time. Um, our restaurants are very consistent with that. We get them every 15 days. So you just got to know that when you're first starting, you're going to have to wait two weeks to get paid, unlike a farmers market or home delivery. And this is one that most people miss out on is caterers, catering. Uh, companies. Uh, great way to build some great relationship with caterings for upscale catering, ones that do weddings, uh, big uh, fancy ones for politicians or anything like that, or just a caterer that wants to make their stuff look a little bit better. So make sure you look at caterers. They're great for bulk orders. Uh, usually they know what they're going to need weeks in advance, sometimes months in advance, and you can set that up uh, for your girl schedule and make sure you're getting it there. Uh, so they're great for advance orders. So definitely don't forget about your caterers. Make sure you check in that. Some of them are with their own restaurants. Some are just wedding caterers or uh, party catering companies. You can check in with them as well. Don't forget about them. Um, my favorite way 
our favorite way is our company is grocery stores. Uh, once you establish consistency, you may want to expand to this. Uh, you want to make sure that you're growing. You can't miss delivering to grocery stores. They're going to expect you to be there every week or every two weeks where you be set up. I recommend every week. And they're going to expect you to be there. So make sure that you're there and ready to deliver. And you can deliver the product consistently every week. Great quality. But it's a great way to establish your brand recognition. People are going to know who you are because they're going to see your products. There's more uh, requirements sometimes in this uh, and procedures that they're going to require, more licensing, more uh, uh, insurance, you know. So you got to look at that and make sure that you know what your area needs for that. And the down draw some people see is the wholesale pricing. I don't see it as a down draw because I can drop off 100, 150 units all in one place. I'm not driving around, wasting gas. We all know that's expensive uh, barrier right now. So... Uh, but and then the billing terms uh, is the next negative with uh, them. They're usually 30 days. This is why we don't recommend this to start with. This is down six months to a year down in your business because you're going to have to wait 30 days plus on some rest, some grocery stores. But typically 30 days before you get paid. So you got to make sure you can float for 30 days before you get the next one. You're still going to be delivering every week, so you're going to have four or five deliveries in before you get paid so can you handle that within your business so make sure you check that out and make sure you check out our video on how to get into grocery stores uh, we did a video on that if you're interested you can go check that out uh, so yep yeah, that is the top five ways that we sell microgreens and uh, go ahead and tell us in the comments anywhere that we didn't mention here where you sell at or where you would like to sell at what is your favorite place to sell your microgreens and as always, make sure you like and subscribe this video if you got value out of it. And that really helps the YouTube algorithm to get it out to more people. And uh, if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. And uh, we really appreciate that. Thank you guys very much. And now we are on to the live Q&A time with everybody. All right. I hope everybody got good value out of that and uh enjoyed that uh i do apologize we were planning on doing the video on the health benefits of the microgreens as you can see in the comments though it just did stretch out way too much uh to be able to do a 10 or 15 minute presentation here in the beginning so we want to give that the time it deserves so we are going to be putting the video out probably friday or saturday uh most likely uh, but one of them too, uh, we're going to put that video out on the health benefits of microgreens. So before, be looking forward to that. We will get that out for you, but we want to give it the time that it deserves and give the good quality that it deserves. So we will be getting that out. Um, so yeah, let's get into the Q&A and live questions and answers. And if you're just showing up to this stream, make sure you go ahead and comment hi, hello, whatever, and then uh, tell us where you're tuning in from. And if you're watching in the replay, make sure you put in hashtag replay. Uh, I'm always curious how many people are watching the replay, so uh, we appreciate that. Yes, Paula, we will be getting that out for sure. That's a, that's a big one, but it's going to be a pretty long and extensive video, so... And a little insight on that, uh, Jessica will be doing that one. So you can look forward to that. Jessica will be uh, the one doing that presentation. Uh, JP119, did you find in the beginning you, you had to decide on whether you would sell business to business or business to consumer? Um, in the beginning, we obviously did business to consumer. Uh, directly to the customers, we did a direct home deliveries, online farmers market, uh, farmers market. Um, then were the three avenues that we started with, and then um, got into grocery stores and uh, restaurants after that. But uh, much easier to go that route than trying to get into them before they know you got a name in the in the area. Welcome to the stream, Nessa. Um, I have flip insurance. I think it's a basic $300 policy. Is that enough for grocery stores? It is enough for us in this area. Uh, that's all they ask for is make sure that we have the coverage. I think it gives you up to a million, yeah. two million, two million in liability, which uh, most of them want somewhere between a million and two million in that liability. 
uh, and it's at $300. It's very cheap for that. I do recommend you checking out Flip Insurance if you haven't. I think Next Insurance is another one uh, that's there also. Uh, but I like Flip. It renews every year automatically. I don't have to think about it. I know we're covered. So, yeah, Flip is a good insurance for sure. Yep, catering. Don't forget about caterers. Um, weddings, whatever else out there. Yep. Veronica, do you offer anything to entice people to become subscribers on the spot at farmers markets? Like a special deal that offers? Um, one thing that we did, we did a giveaway uh, to get signups, to get people interested. Obviously, you're going to get a lot more people than actually are interested. They just always want to win a free stuff. But you get their email. You get their phone number. So you got a way to contact them and stay in contact with them often, and you're going to get more people on your email list right away. So we did that, and then we did a free uh, giveaway on our Facebook page. Uh, you can do it on your Instagram, whatever kind of way you want to do it. Uh, do the giveaway that get people interested to sign up. Um, we also do have, which is very rarely used, we have a program if they refer somebody, a neighbor, a friend, a family member, whoever they refer, they get one week for free. They have to pay for a week before they get the week free, but they do get a week free if they have somebody sign up underneath uh, their, them, if they mention that they told them to sign up. Oh, how do you say that town name? Bruner? Right on? Berwyn, Illinois. Uh, I'm not familiar with that one. Um, I'm in Illinois as well. Is it up uh, north? No. Chicago land. Chicago land. Um, hi, Red Dawn. How are you tonight? Brittany, which do you prefer selling to, grocery stores or restaurants, and why? I like grocery stores. Um, one, higher volume, bigger sales for us. Um, they're not as finicky. Uh, chefs can change their mind at times. Uh, they're going to change more orders. They're going to want it this way, that way. You know, grocery store, you're just delivering it, putting it on the shelf, good to go. Um, chefs can be finicky, you know. Uh, they're going to change their orders more often. They're going to change their menu more often. The grocery store, when you set it up, you know, you got your four products, 12 products, however many products you're bringing, you're just bringing them every week on that par or however you set it up. You're just bringing them, and then you're good to go. Uh, restaurants are going to change their mind often. They're going to have new menus out. Uh, and I like restaurants because they pay faster and more frequently uh, without having to chase them down. Grocery stores, I like less on the pain because it takes 30 days, and some of them you have to track down and get them to, to pay you and tell them not. Now we got them all set up, and they're good. We're getting weekly consistency paying from all our grocery stores, so it's not bad. But they can be difficult in the beginning uh, to get there. But if I had to choose, I would definitely go grocery stores. If I had to choose one or the other, I would go grocery store over a restaurant. Volume sales, yep. Get your volume sales. More more money. Selling to food trucks may be a good idea also. Yep, food trucks are big business in some areas. Uh, a little bit here. Uh, obviously... Not much until about this time of year. They come on until, you know, September or October area. Um, kind of like a farmer's market, you know, pops up. Uh, food trucks start popping up. Um, they can be a good source also. Uh, I kind of lump them into restaurants. Uh, so definitely if, don't forget food trucks. Good point, Paula. Yep, just outside of Chicago. Uh, do you st still send invoices weekly to grocery stores even if they pay on a monthly basis? Yes. They get an invoice every time we deliver. Uh, we get a signature, and we deliver and make sure that they got it in the back. Uh, if it's p getting close to the 30 days or a little bit after, we will inquire with the produce manager or whoever is in charge of that, and that are typically the produce manager, and we'll inquire and ask them if they know when this is going to get, and usually they can – get it going and push through if it hasn't got pushed through yet. So, yes, every week they get an invoice. And you're going to see a weekly. Once they start paying 30 days, then you're going to see a paycheck or a payment every week. It's going to be rolling every week a payment. 
uh, to you. So it's just that first 30 days you kind of got to get through. But yeah, definitely, uh, definitely check that out. Uh, I love grocery stores, the volume. And once you get past that 30 days, they'll just, them checks will roll in and you'll have no, uh, no problem getting them checks. Is a 15, Brittany used to ask, is it 15 or 30 days to get paid only for the first time, then it's consistent, or it's that way every time? So it's going to be that way every time. They're always going to be 30 days behind and or 15 days behind, whatever it is, for restaurants. So, like, if you deliver this week, you're not going to see that payment for another four, four to five weeks. And then the next week, it'll be four to five weeks. So it, once you get past that 30 days, it's going to be every week that you're going to get a paycheck, that you're going to get a payment from them. Typically, sometimes they go on vacation for 10 days during the holidays and nobody does any work. Be cautious of that. As we ran into that, they basically took off for two weeks, uh, the one big grocery store, and nobody paid bills. Uh, and there was a lot of vendors very upset uh, <laughs> with them, so it wasn't just us. Uh, we, we were small potatoes, so I'm sure we uh, were last on our list to pay. Yep, juice bars, uh, definitely in the realm of uh, restaurants, juice bars as well, yep. Gyms, um, the juice bars within the gyms, I'm assuming. Yeah, them are great sources, for sure. Um, huh? Do you know if they operate more like grocery stores or restaurants? Uh, the, gym, the juice bars are probably going to be more on a, I would consider them a restaurant. And uh, do 15 days on them. Yep, uh, they're they're in that restaurant world to me. Uh, juice bars are. A lot of juice bars are smaller companies, and sometimes you can get paid on delivery. So, if you can negotiate that with any of the small grocery stores, restaurants, or anything else to get paid on delivery, we have one restaurant. There's a taco place that they paid on delivery. That's the best. If you can get that, go for that first. Try that angle first and get paid right away. You're no problem, Natasha. You're welcome. Nasha. Sorry. If I ever say anybody's names wrong, I do apologize in advance. All right. All right. Uh, everybody getting ready for farmer's market seasons. Um, Put up a poll. I'm gonna put up a poll here in just a second. Jessica's getting that together. And uh, I'm gonna do a poll on that. Farmers market seasons are around. Make sure you get signed up now or you'll be late. Um, also, want to mention our consulting business. We do do a one-on-one -on -one consulting. Um, I'm gonna have some clips brought out soon on the consulting that we just recently did with Brittany and her husband Daniel uh, from Dalrock Microgreens. Uh, we did a pretty lengthy uh, discussion. Uh, they're typically for one hour is what they are. They still are at $67 right now. Uh, we're just going to hold that special going right now. They're normally $97 but they are $67. You can check that out uh, on our page just itty-bitty-microfarm.com and just go to the microgreen business section tab and you can find the information out there uh yeah so it was a great conversation with uh with dal rock microgreens uh and uh we did had a good time with them so we really enjoyed that we got another one coming up this saturday uh with he's in here uh red dawn is in here oh uh, not sure i can't remember his uh business name so, Red Don, if you want to, you can comment your business name in here. But we uh, do have a consulting coming up with him this uh, Saturday as well. So, anybody else that would like to sign up and look into that, uh, you can check that out on that page. Are you, are you doing farmer goods? Yeah. No. Uh, so, that post should be coming up here in just a second. Uh, 
So that's uh, what we're doing with the consulting right now. So, hello, Trace. Haven't been called Mikey in a long time. I'll take it. Uh, is a produce manager the one that you usually leave invoices with? Jocelyn and I got into our first one this week. Congratulations. Good job. Have you made the delivery there yet? Or are you uh, growing and getting it uh, ready for them? Uh, the produce manager is typically the one that you talk to all the way. From the time you set it up to the time you deliver it. Uh, to the time you give the invoice, which you give to them on a weekly basis. And if you need to get payment information sent in, it's usually them. There's usually an office that paying it out, but you know, he can usually, he or her can usually help get that uh, moved along if they're not getting you in the system. And sometimes when you get it, first get it in the system, it takes a minute. So um, you've got to kind of pressure them a little bit. Oh, Red Skull. Gotcha. Gotcha. New names on YouTube versus Discords versus other things. So sometimes you don't know. Um, one other thing that it ex um, got me excited. We did yesterday. Did a live. If nobody, if you didn't see that, we did a live where we had uh, some microgreen growers come on live. Brittany was on and. Uh, Jens from uh, LGA Microgreens was on as well, and we had a good conversation, went a little bit over an hour. Uh, so we're kind of going to do a podcast version of this a little bit. I'm going to see if anybody's interested to where we can have three people on uh, at a time. We can do more than that, but I think three uh, is kind of the threshold. If anybody's interested in that joining, we're going to try and do that on an occasion, maybe weekly, maybe monthly, where we just have some growers on. A separate from this one, a different, different, pro, different live, where we just have a conversation about their business and where you're at, and uh, kind of just, uh, and obviously take anybody's comments that comes in as well on that. Uh, so if anybody's interested in that, um, you can shoot us a message at our Instagram uh, or our Facebook as well. Uh, just shoot me a message, and uh, we'll see about getting you on there. We didn't deliver yet. They placed an order to see how well they will sell. Delivery set for April 5th. Awesome. Great job, Veronica. First one's always exciting. Um, just curious, uh, what is, uh, how many units are you delivering? And if anybody doesn't know units or how many of the items. So if you got five SKUs and you're delivering five of each of them, that's 25 units you'd be delivering. Speaking of flip insurance, did you guys add cyber liability? It's supposed to protect you with data breaches. We added it. I think it's 95 extra. Um, we did not. We already have that protection with a different uh, thing, so we didn't. We didn't need to need to add that. But that is, if you don't have it, would not be a bad thing to add on for sure. Sounds fun. They order 25 units. That's a good start. Um, that is a good start, depending on the size of the grocery store. We found out when you first start, you start with like 20 to 30 item units, and vastly, uh, depending on their volume, obviously, we can grow up to 100, 150 units uh, pretty fast uh, to go through. So we just slowly took more and more space of all our grocery stores. You know, start with four four sliders, and eventually we're at 12 sliders, 16 sliders, and so I think we got 16 in one of them, and maybe 12. But yeah, uh, you can keep on adding on. Uh, it's the great thing about it. They see your products moving, they're gonna want more of them. And if you're gonna keep them stocked for them and have products in there weekly and fresh products that are moving, they're gonna love you. What are the poll results, Jessica? Can you go on? And how many? So currently winning. I think we may. Did we get everybody to everybody vote, get a chance to vote on the poll? If you haven't yet, go vote now. We will be ending that poll here shortly. So go uh, go do that. 
Next question. We have a question. Uh, Brittany, can you go over the grocery stores and restaurant pricing? All right. Grocery stores get a wholesale discount, typically around 30%. Uh, so if you're selling an item for $5 retail, you're typically going to give it to the grocery store for $350. Uh, you can get them unit discounts if you want. If they buy over 100 units, you can give them a percentage off, an amount off. Uh, we've went away from that. We did do that in the beginning, but we've kind of went away from that just with what the prices are to keep the prices where they we can still afford to deliver to them with fuel and everything. So that went away. Uh, but th typically 30% is the discount. And do not do consignment with them. Any unsold products you'll buy back, don't do that. They're going to ask you, but don't do it. Uh, because you can't control when, once it's in the store and it's out of your hands of people grabbing from the back and bad products. Them deciding to shuffle stuff around in their grocery store and stock them wrong. Uh, so I do not recommend that. Uh, just you bring them, you sold them, that's what they buy. Uh, in restaurant pricing, it's retail or more. Um, on some of our products in our restaurants, we get more than retail on it. Uh, and they don't bat an eye at it. Uh, they pay the bill. Um, but don't ever go less than retail for your grocery store. So if you're selling leeks at $5 an ounce retail uh, at a farmer's market or direct to consumer or in the grocery store, you sell it no less than $5 uh, uh, to the restaurant. Never less. Joshua, welcome to the stream. I saw your wood chip delivery. Are you buying any compost yet? Uh, we are going to have to buy a little bit of compost because uh, we don't have enough to fill all 18 beds this year that we're building. Uh, so we're going to have to buy a little bit of compost, but uh, hopefully be minimal uh, from what we got currently that the chickens have helped us make. But yeah, we're going to have to buy a little bit. But uh, yeah, the wood chips were free. Um, if anybody's looking to get wood chips, um, make sure that you... Uh, look at your local tree services. They're usually looking for a place to get rid of their uh, debris, their waste really, and it'd be great for us. So they uh, they love to try to find a place for that. So make sure you look at that and get the wood chips for free. Don't pay for them. Yeah, we got a lot, a lot of wood chips to move. <laughs> I don't know if you guys seen that. If you've seen the basketball in the back, basketball hoop in the back, that's a 10 foot basketball hoop. And so it's probably eight foot high uh, seven to eight foot high and a uh, full link of the driveway. So it's, it's quite a bit. Veronica, yeah, yes, I was hoping we just didn't have to awkward stalk for payments like you mentioned. I'm sh too introverted for that, yeah. Uh, it can be awkward, but you know, they're a customer. They got to pay you. Um, they haven't paid you within 30 days. Make sure you just say, hey, I just that invoice we first delivered to you. We haven't got payment on it for it. Can you check on it for me? Um, that's one thing we do have to get out of as business owners of uh, making sure we're asking for the money that we're owed. So, yeah. Do you have any indoor furry friends? We do. We have two cats. They're both Bengal cats. Um, they're father and son. They do not like each other. So they have to be separated. <laughs> Thought they would love each other. Uh, they don't. Uh, but, yeah, but they're great. They're nice cats. They're awesome. Um love them all right poll results Jessica what is our poll results 56% of you are doing three plus here I'll read it off my phone here be a little bit here so 50 I got 55% at three plus 30% of you are not doing any one percent is one is doing 11 11 percent is doing one and zero percent is doing two so congratulations to you guys going out there hustling and getting it done this year the farm market is doing three plus we are going to be doing four maybe five maybe uh, but probably four at least uh, one way or another um, but yeah I uh, love farmers markets to get you out there uh, Great, great way to get your name out there for sure. Do you mess with, with, um, 
No, they don't mess with them. They're not really allowed in the grow room. Um, so they don't mess with them. We do give them wheat grass. Uh, one licks it and one eats it. So uh, definitely, uh, definitely two different cats in mentality and everything else. So, but uh, we have one licks the wheat grass, one eats the wheat grass. But they're not allowed in the the grow room at all. So uh, we had a vent fan uh, last year during the summer. We used uh, it died. It was a cheap one. Uh, we are getting one this week from Lowe's. It's like 90 bucks and it's temperature rated. So like when the temperature gets to whatever level you want to set it at, it'll kick on. It's like the metal vent ones that you find in a, in a greenhouse that would come on. So I'll post a picture or do a video on it or something uh, to let you guys know what it is and everything like that for sure. Or maybe in a live, I'll show it here or something. But you'll see it one way or another. Hello, Kyle. Welcome back to the stream. The cats. Oh, okay. Okay. Gotcha. Link, please. Brittany would like a link to the vent. I will get officially known as Oz, but also Jessica over here. I'm going to get you guys to know her more, get her more on things, wearing her down. So, uh, if you haven't been here long, uh, my wife does help with the, these streams. She's the producer. She wants that brings up all the questions, does all the back end stuff for me. Uh, so I can just talk to you. Uh, so she doesn't necessarily like being on the camera a lot, uh, but we're getting her there. Uh, so she was, came, Dick gave the name Oz, uh, which she hates that movie, but she was given the name Oz by some people in the chat. So that did join us. So, Uh, I'll bring that up. Oh, sorry. Does Sea Leaf offer an option to make soak reminders on only plant or only plant? Nope. Uh, they do soaking as well. Um, here, let me. I'm gonna just kind of pull it up here. So, in your tasks on Seed Leaf, uh, insert, it's not going to load. So, there's a soak area right here that you have uh, of soaking your seeds. So, it tells you uh, then you set it up for how long you want it to do. If you want to do it overnight, you just click the button and say, Yeah, overnight soak. So, it's going to tell you the night before to soak it. So, like Wednesday, we should have some soaking to be done for wheatgrass. Yep, right there. So it's going to tell me right there that how many, what I need to soak for my wheatgrass on Wednesday for planting on Thursday, because it has a 12-hour overnight soak. So yeah, it uh, definitely does that, and then obviously the sowing of the microgreens and everything on it as well. I'm going to be doing an updated video on seed leaf uh, because they've added so many uh, new features on there and everything else. So I'm going to be doing an updated video on that as well. Um, and they do have a referral links now. I appreciate anybody helping out with that. Uh, and clicking on that if you're interested in Sea Leaf, uh, check that out. It's a great, great program. Uh, so far, really liking it. There's some you got to, you do have to go enter every customer in. There's not an automatic thing that would flow in or anything like that, but it does well. So that's the other ones, multiple days of soaking there, or multiple items of soaking. So, yeah. I hope that helped you out, Veronica. Um, Brittany from the Great and Powerful Oz. Yes, she is great and powerful. Uh, Want to be able to do 10% of what I do, so without her. Hi, uh, Veronica. I can't remember, but do they have an app? When we join, we definitely will be using your referral. Thank you, Veronica. It's all web-based, um, so but it, it says app. The website is app.cleaf.co because uh, it is a Canadian company. But uh, they, uh, it's not an app necessarily, but you can get it from your phone on the web page on Chrome or whatever you use there. You can uh, load it. I use it on my phone a lot when looking at stuff. 
Um, we do have a tablet that we use it on in the harvesting slash uh, planting room that we have uh, that you could see. You could probably see, I think it's in our uh, farm tour as well that we have just on the wall that we can look at right there and everything else. But it, you can use your phone, you can use uh, anything that you can get on the web. Is a five by trace for the wheatgrass for the 24? Uh, yes, that's uh, one five by five is that. So that's three trays of eight counts uh, that we have sold. So yeah. Is this the way we sell it? So it's the way we put it in the system. We sell it by each of the five by fives. So that way it calculates correctly for uh, how much it does. If it says to grow 22, we'll grow 24 um, and sell the two on the market wagon. Then we haven't sold. And vice versa. If we sell 28, we have we're growing 32. We'll put six of them, four of them on for market wagon, whatever it is. It would be awesome if Seed Leaf eventually integrates an app with the pop-up reminder like you need to soak at 8 a.m. for 12 m. Yeah, um, yeah. It's kind of you just got to kind of know, um, but it would be nice. Uh, it would be a cool feature. Uh, I'll bring it up to Chris and see. I'm hoping to have Chris on one of these lives or uh, one of the podcast kind of shows uh, to discuss Seed Leaf with everybody else. We just got to get a time set up with him, but he's definitely interested in doing that. Uh, so uh, he's been great, great to deal with. Uh, it's a great guy. Answers your questions, gets back to you right away. Uh, so doing good thing over there. Possibly. We can possibly go over to Discord after this. Who on here is on Discord uh, microgreen group? Who's not on it? So if you're on the microgreens uh, mentor or microgreens Discord, say, say that in the chat. If you're not on it, let me know. All right, next. Welcome to the stream, Mason. Thanks for the advice a couple of months ago, increasing yields and lowering label from South Louisiana. Yes, it's been a while since I've seen you on here, but welcome back. Um, some people lurk in the back. You never know if they're back there and just saying, I'm commenting, but I'm glad you're having great success with that. Uh, yes, increasing your yield on your products is, uh, is big once you get growing. Uh, we are... Just some of the yields that we're getting now that we're using the Gaia Green, which some videos should be coming out soon. I gotta talk to my editor. Soon. Uh, got one more to do, and then we're gonna get the videos out on the Gaia Green using that to get better yield. Uh, we are getting close to 30 ounces on our peas right now. Uh, so amazing there. Um, almost two pounds on some of them. And the sunflowers are 24 to 28 ounces as well. So. And the kettle looks better. The product just looks better. More color in them. Uh, so definitely, definitely recommend that. <laughs> yeah, can not come see us in the Discord? Yeah, James. We got to We got to come over in Discord, right? Everybody gets to talk. Um, for sure. Um, also, if anybody would like to come on, all you got to do is have a mic. You don't have to come on camera. Uh, if you do not like the camera. I know some people don't like the camera I'm not pointing any fingers if you don't like the camera but you want to come on and uh, chat live on here I just put a link in the, the chat there you can come on it pulls you in the background you may have seen that before coming up and uh, ask your question live come on and talk I can bring up the Discord link in a second. Do you, can you? Okay. Let me get to the Discord real fast for you guys. I know some other people are in here in Discord in that Discord group as well. If you uh, might be able to get to it faster than I can. Um, Red Dawn, Derek. James, uh, if you guys could go ahead and post that Discord link for me, that'd be great as well. Huh? 
Hang up. La, da, da, da. We gotta move things on my computer. So not everything is ready to use. Because it wasn't acting right. There we go. Got it. There we go. Computer was not acting right, so I had to move things around and get it going, so Kyle is on the Discord. Yep. See Kyle there. Three farmers markets, congratulations. Uh Kyle, is this your first year doing farmers market? Second year, third, fourth, fifth? What year are you at? Um, and have you sold at any farmers markets yet? There are already two people over waiting in voice chat and Discord. Uh, do you have any other farmers you follow besides Curtis? Yes, uh, Josh Staten, Staten, is that right? Staten, Josh Staten, if I can spell his, say his name right. Josh Staten, uh, we follow him, um, he does great. Uh, most of our market gardening stuff is coming from Josh on how to do stuff and do the lasagna beds uh, that we'll be showing you guys how to do as well. Um, so that's coming from him. A lot of the farming, uh, market garden farming stuff's coming more from him. Some Curtis, uh, but Curtis was a little bit of the older way, but I think Josh learned a lot from Curtis, made it a little bit of his own, and we're doing the same. So definitely uh, them. Um, Epic Gardening, of course, and my gardener. Follow in my gardener, guys. He's a great guy, and he just hit 1 million subscribers on his channel. Uh, so in my gardener is a uh, really good and he does seed cells as well. I don't think it's in microgreen cells, but for your garden cells as well. Uh, in my garden is good. Almost everybody, uh, I'll watch and, uh, you can always pick up techniques from everybody. So, uh, you know, you can't stay away from discord. Discord is a trap. No, it's a, uh, it's great. It's being able to talk to people and everything. No, Brittany, it does not. <laughs> Brittany really wants Seed Leaf to work with Zapier. I will bring it up to Chris as well, maybe in the future. Um, but I'm sure that's a lot more coding stuff with that to integrate with that. But it's possible, I'm sure. Uh, he has a coder on staff. I think his business partner on it is a coder. So it's possible. Maybe they just haven't thought of it. Nothing, but... Um, Brittany really wants that uh, Zapier. She loves the Zapier now. Uh, if you guys don't know what Zapier is, it's a spreadsheet kind of thing that just kind of fills it into multiple things for you all at once. You can send it out to go to many things once they fill out one item and it can go to like five, like up to five different things. So if you have five different places you need it, it can go up to that. It's great. It was part of the Curtis Stone program that showed us uh, on it, um, of the Microgreens Blueprint which is no longer than $97. So if you want to use our code for that, uh, you can uh, to get on that, our affiliate link. We appreciate that as well. I'll work on him, Brittany. I'll see what I can do. Uh, Kyle, first year starting out, starting again. It's been many years ago I sold them. Awesome. Glad you're back into it, Kyle. Um, I think this is a great business, and uh, we can make good waves in this. Uh, if everybody is doing things right, growing right, selling correctly, and uh, really push this microgreen business for everybody up. Um, I believe in teaching everybody. Obviously, you guys know that. Uh, but, you know, grab that next hand behind you and keep dragging them up. So if we can all do that, we'll make a great community. Um, I didn't even see it. So, um, Brittany, did you see the link for the vent fan that, uh, Jessica posted in there? I didn't even see it go in. So there it is. If you guys haven't seen it, that's uh, the link for it. I don't know if you have a Lowe's in your area, but if not, you can find out where it's sold with that link. I'm sure.
All right, what else? Hey, welcome to the stream. Welcome. Uh, we are selling to Zumba classes, just starting. Uh, have you sold to them yet? Have they taken delivery of the products? Because I'm curious how well that's going, because we've definitely drive past one every week right next to the restaurant we deliver to and we've thought about it and thought about it we've just never gone in uh so i'm curious uh how well that goes for you for sure uh joshua are you getting any upgrade any market garden tools yes number one thing is a green harvester i know you mentioned that before and i said no um uh, but we looked at it time-wise and effectiveness and just basically us too that we are going to take the dive and get the green harvester um, I still wish it was the hundred and seventy nine dollars that Curtis has on his videos uh, but now it's like 560 so uh, but yeah we're gonna get the green harvester I would love to get a tilter at some point this year um, them are my two biggest purchases that I'm gonna, I want to get for the market garden are you upgrading any tools this year? Anybody upgrading any of their gardening tools this year? What are you doing? Oh, Kyle, this is your first time for microgreens. Okay, all right. Well, welcome. Welcome to the microgreens. Um, it's definitely, uh, definitely fun. Great business. Quick turnarounds on sales. You can definitely make it happen. And uh, one thing I want to mention, guys, remember always, like, when you're growing your microgreens, if you don't have a completely sold off room, which nobody's going to have that, with the changing of the times, humidity changes, temperature changing, going up or down wherever you're at, uh, humidity changing, going up and down, your grows can change. So keep notes. Every season you go through, keep your notes. Hey, this time when the temperature was this, this happened to my arugula, or I needed to water the arugula more. Uh, you're not going to always remember that. So make sure you keep notes because if you're going through these many seasons in your first year of growing, that way you can make changes ahead of time before it happens to you next year. So definitely recommend that. But yeah, market gardening uh, is going to take a lot of time along with the microgreens. We're going to be very, very busy harvesting and doing all that stuff. Planting, we are on our second planting of lettuce now for the market garden. Uh, we got radishes, beets. We planted beets uh, Sunday as well, started them. Spinach, we're going to direct sow uh, here soon uh, once some beds are built all out in the back. Radishes will be starting soon as well. Uh, them take less time, so they'll be le less. And I am starting all of them in uh, soil blocks. Everything besides spinach. Spinach is going to be direct sowed. Um, uh, I think that's pretty much what we're sticking to this year. High value crops, quick turnover, um, crops are what we are looking for. So, so same premise of, uh, microgreens. I don't want to grow carrots and wait three months, four months to, to harvest carrots. Uh, we may do some cucumbers and some tomatoes, but that might just be for our solid program, but... It's one, yeah, they're, the Zoom, yeah, there's just one class, but they are everywhere. <laughs> that is for sure. Um, got probably quite a few of them in our town here, uh, but we do go past one all the time. So you might inspire me just to stop in and check on them, see what they want for sure. See if we can sell to them. Uh, might as well. We're going right next to it every day, every week. So, um, Got it. Got stuff of them. We did uh, just get 45 meat chickens in today, so they're in their brooding. Um, has anybody raised meat chickens? Want to raise meat chickens? Uh, this is a new experience for us. We're going to chronicle it, uh, raising 45 meat chickens in suburbia, and uh, see how well it goes and what we can get out of them. So. Going to get Jessica to show. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. 
Oh, there they are. There's our meat chickens. All Cornish cross. Meat chickens. Right there. Uh, hopefully they're only going to spend a couple days inside. Three or four days and it's going to be warm enough here with a heat lamp to get them outside. We just want the first three to seven days of um, uh, being inside uh, and doing that. So uh, They were chirping and uh, the great thing is we've got them from uh, our local farming home. Uh, so we know they're all were alive when we got them, they, when they're shipped. Uh, you never know if you're going to lose a couple here or there. Uh, but great price, and uh, we were able to make sure they were all alive and pick them up, pick them out out of the, the bin uh, for us. So, yeah, they're great. Oh, and we also got some more seeds in. We got our amaranth and bulls, or not bulls blood, but beets, red giant. Detroit red beets, uh, since you can't get the bull's blood. Um, Detroit beets. Uh, Amaranth, Detroit beets. What else did we get? Peas, obviously. You always order peas. Cabbage, red cabbage. Some more kale seeds. More pea seeds, yeah. All that. And that's how we started CSA, Batik Gyms, CrossFit, Bar, Orange Theory. Yeah, that's a good one, etc. Been doing great. Awesome. Good to hear. Glad you're doing well with that. Now you're inspiring me to go do it. Got to jump off. Might be on Discord later. Thanks for joining, Brittany. Have a great night. Joshua, I've always wondered if people can clean green harvester ropes. Yeah. The rope system, yeah. That's, that's... I think even the bag, if you watch some of Curtis's videos, that bag's pretty dirty that he has. But I think they, looking at them, I think they can be disassembled and clean. But So, yeah. Definitely, uh, definitely, uh, we'll see if we can do that. Maybe if you can put them in a bag and put it in the washer. Possible. We'll find out. Uh, watch for predictors, predators. Lost a couple. Yeah. I think birds are one of the raccoons. Yeah, we got ours. Uh, we have 35, 34, sorry, 34 laying hens currently. And uh, they all got a net over top of them. Really, really enclosed. So they can't, uh, they're free range, but they got a netting, uh, pond netting we put over the top. So no birds wanted to fly in or predators. And uh, our raccoons can't get in because we got it all sealed off and everything else. So. But yeah, the meat ones are going to be kind of more out there, so definitely got to watch that. Starting your first restaurant, awesome! Congratulations, Kyle. Do you use crack seeds for cilantro? We use, yeah. Uh, what? Leisure splits is what they're called. They're already cracked. Yes, definitely recommend that. Uh, you don't want to do quicker germination too, quicker grow with them. Save time. Same effort of the seeds on there, all that stuff. So, all right. Uh, I think uh, unless there's any last-minute questions or anything or anybody, we're almost at the hour mark. I hope everybody got value out of this. If you did get value, make sure you give it a like. It gets it out there for the replay to everybody. Uh, the more likes, YouTube picks it up, uh, comments, everything uh, really helps out. Uh, and if you're not subscribed already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Check out our video coming up soon for um, the benefits, health benefits of the microgreens and uh, some chicken videos and everything else that we're bringing out, uh, our gardening videos and everything else. Uh, we'll have that out. Yeah, rabbits are uh, cool too. Uh, my daughter wants us to get rabbits, uh, so maybe. Rabbits are good fertilizers. Um, they're... Uh, their manure is a great fertilizer for your garden. So, All right, um, everybody, I'm going to jump off. Uh, I am going to head over to Discord. I'm going to say 20 or 30 minutes. It'll probably be two hours. Then we'll be over there. Um, so if you want to join us over there at Discord, you can join uh, that group. It's a, If you don't get on live tonight or anything like that, it is a great uh, group to be on and be able to ask questions um, as the week goes on and everything like that. So make sure you check that out. And uh, we'll be over to Discord. I appreciate everybody checking us out tonight. 
Um, remember, we're back every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time right here on YouTube. And we will be having that podcast stuff coming out and some more interviews with uh, other people and everything else. So make sure you check out all our videos. Make sure you have that bell notification on, and we will see you in the next one.